At this time, we're going to begin a testimony around housing, public, subsidized, and private. Before we get started, I want to show you guys something. Um, the issues of housing that we're going to be talking about is covered in this book right here, the Universal, uh, I apologize, this book right here, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which um, trumps this book, which is known as the United States Constitution, and never implemented. Um, so we're going to begin under the category of housing, which is protected by Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, with the testimony of Carol Steele from the Coalition of Tech Public Housing and a lifelong Green Green resident, fighter, advocate, and messenger of the people, Mrs. Carol Steele. Good afternoon, um, Mr. Dion. I want to personally thank you for coming out and hearing our stories today. And hopefully, this will be another avenue that we can use to get justice in our city. Once again, I want to say my name is Carol Steele, co founder of the Coalition of Tech Public Housing, and a long time resident of the Great Brain. And yes, my my human rights has been violated upon the Article 25 of the Declaration of uh, Human Rights. And the reason my human rights has been violated because as a resident of Green Green, which is 98% African American women and children, basically, we had 36 units of housing. And we got what they call Hope 6. And it was supposed to be for the revitalization of public housing. But in Cabrini, they wanted to tell us, we're going to be on housing for you. We're going to revitalize your community. And only 15% of you can come back. Well, we said, who do we sacrifice? What 85% do we make homeless? So Cabrini began to fight. And right now, Cabrini has what they call a court decree to be able to stay in that community. But Cabrini is not alone in this fight. There's public housing throughout Chicago and also in other states, New York, New Orleans, North Carolina, Atlanta, and it's used to housing every day. Uh, Chicago, when, when, when they mandated that they do what they call a viability study, it mandated that 18,000 units of family housing in Chicago come down out of a stock of 3,800, I mean 38,000. That was a big loss for Chicago. We said, where do the people go? So we began to fight. Right now, we have 22,000 units of family housing down in the city of Chicago, and only 2,000 built. Those numbers don't add up. That's why we're asking for a moratorium or any more demolition of public housing until this city catches up with building for housing for people that's in need. When this big plan they call transformation came about, this region was already had already had a shortage of 153,000 low-income housing. And we say Stop the demolition until you catch up with the rebuilding. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been a hard battle in the city because it, it wasn't just about racism, it became about classism. Getting rid of poor people without with, with, with a need for housing throughout the city. And you're going to hear other people state that need. Um, in this city right now, if you don't make over 60,000, 60,000 is being real low. Uh, you can't afford to stay in the city. So we're asking that you take this into consideration and, and, and make sure that our recommendation states that there be a moratorium or any more demolition for public housing throughout the United States. Thank you.